So what about life when we uh, choose to park our vehicles on another planet, on the moon, but mm -hmm. let's go to Mars. First of all, does that excite you, humans going to Mars, like stepping foot on Mars? And when do you think it'll happen? It does excite me. I think visionaries like Elon are working to make that happen in terms of building the road to space. We are really excited about building out the human lived experience of space once you get there. So how are you going to grow your food? What is your habitat going to look like? I think it's profoundly exciting, but I do think that there's a little bit of a misunderstanding of Mars anywhere in the near future being anything like a replacement for Earth. Mm. So it is good for humanity to have these other pockets of our civilization that can expand out beyond Earth. But uh, Mars is not, in its current state, a good home for humanity. Too many perchlorates in the soil. You can't use that soil to grow crops. Atmosphere is too thin. Certainly can't breathe it, but it's also just really thin compared to our atmosphere. A lot of different challenges that would have to be fundamentally changed on that planet to make it a good home for a large human civilization. How does a large civilization of humans get built on Mars? And what what do you think? Um, where do you think it gets starts being difficult? So, can you have a small base of like ten people, essentially, kind of like the International Space Station kind of yeah. situation? And then, can you get it to a hundred, to a thousand, to a million? Are there some interesting? challenges there that worry you, saying that Mars is just not a good backup at this time yeah. for Earth? I think small outposts, absolutely, like McMurdo, right? So we have these models of really extreme environments on Earth and Antarctica, for example, where humans have been able to go and make a, a sustainable settlement. McMurdo-style life on Mars, probably feasible in the 2030s. So we want to send the first human missions to Mars, and maybe as early as the end of this decade, more likely early 2030s. Moving anywhere beyond that in terms of a place where like an entire human life would be lived, where it's not just you go for a three-month deployment and you come back, that is actually the big challenge line. It's just saying, is there enough um, technological sophistication that can be brought that far out into space? If you imagine your electronics break, there's no radio shack. <laughs> this dates me a little bit that my mind jumps to radio shack. <laughs> but there's no, you know, there's no supply chains on Mars that can supply the level of technological sophistication for all the products that we rely on on day-to-day -day life. So you'd be going back to actually a very simple existence, more like pioneer life out West in the story of the U.S., uh, for example. And I think that the future of larger scale gatherings of humans in orbit, or sorry, in space, is actually going to be in microgravity, floating space mm. cities, not so much trying to um, establish settlements on the surface. So you think sort of a significant engineering investment in terms of our efforts and money should be on large um, spaceships that yes. perhaps are doing this kind of um, self-assembly, all these kinds of things and doing an orbit, yeah. maybe b building a giant donut around the planet over time. Yeah, that is the goal. And I think the current political climate is such that you can't get the trillion dollar investment to build, to start from scratch and build the sci-fi megastructure. Mm -hmm. But if you can build it in fits and starts in little different pieces, which is another advantage of self-assembly, it's much more like how nature works. So it's biomimicry inspired way for humanity to scale out in space. And whether it's out in space or on Mars, the idea that sort of two people fall in love, they have sex, uh, a child is born, and then that couple has to teach that child that, like, we <laughs> that they came from Earth. I, I just love the idea that somebody's born on Mars or out in space, and you have to be like, that th this is not actually like the original home, right? Just them looking at, our, at Earth and being like, this is where we came from. I don't know, that's really inspiring to me. And the child being really confused and then wanting to go back to TikTok or whatever, <laughs> they, or whatever they do. Whatever they do in that era. <laughs> I mean, there's great sci fi, right? About um, people being born on Mars. And because it's a lower gravity environment, they're taller, they're more gangly mm, if they yeah. were actually able to develop there. And then they come back to Earth and they're like second class citizens because they can't function here in the same way because the gravity is too strong for them. You see this in series like The Expanse with the belters and these, you know, different societies that uh, if we were to succeed in having human societies grow up in different pockets, it's not necessarily going to be easy for them to always come back to Earth as their home.